All right. Hello, everybody. Hello, Bangkok. I'm super excited to count down some of my favorite improvements to Filecoin over the past year and give you a quick preview of some of the goals and metrics that we are aligning on as a community to focus on in 2025. And then super excited to, to chat a little bit and, and even answer some questions about uh, all of the great discussions we've been having over the past couple of days here in Bangkok with the PhilDev Summit um, as we start aligning our roadmaps for next year. Um, so, as a reminder, many of you here already know, uh, but Filecoin is a crypto-powered storage network designed to decentralize an efficient and robust foundation for humanity's information and create that for the world. We're following the Filecoin master plan. First, we built the world's largest decentralized storage network. Then we worked to onboard and safeguard humanity's data. We're in the midst of that right now and scaling that out for the world. Um, and then we are upgrading Filecoin to bring even richer uh, components and services that can enable compute and large web scale applications on top of decentralized storage. So to count down what I think are the, the three major accomplishment domains that Filecoin worked on in 2024, the first is focusing on launching new Filecoin L2s and on-ramps to scale useful storage and make storage services more accessible to many different types of users. Next was growing Filecoin adoption services and exports more broadly. And then third was scaling the Filecoin economy, bringing new components of DeFi, paid demand into the Filecoin economy as well. So starting with that first one, um, the Filecoin virtual machine has now been live on the Filecoin network for uh, going on two years now. Um, and this added programmability on top of all of the baseline components in Filecoin. Um, and what that's allowed us to do is bring many different types of applications into Filecoin, um, launching things like perpetual storage, compute networks, retrieval markets and retrieval checking, DeFi loan markets. And now what that's unlocked for the Filecoin economy is layer two networks that are customizing and improving Filecoin to extend to different user groups and make the base baseline Filecoin L1 storage primitives even more accessible and useful for different kinds of groups. So each of these are building on top of the Interplanetary Consensus System, or IPC. Um, kind of funky slide here, came out weird. Um, but this enables many different flexible network configurations to optimize for different use cases, to scale horizontally, um, and to even customize for things like geographic regions. And we're seeing a number of these new exciting networks harness this technology to then deliver new L2s building on top of Filecoin's L1 that make that storage components more accessible. So we have groups like Storacha, which is introduced their super hot network that is really useful developer-focused Filecoin APIs, already used by many groups like Fleek, um, NFT storage, um, things that are focused on social gaming, NFTs, and much, much more. But if you want the easiest way to get stor started storing your data on Filecoin, this is the, the on-ramp and L2 for you. And they uh, have some exciting announcements, I think, right after this uh, to share even more. We also just heard from Akave, who is creating the first L2 storage chain focused on data lakes and optimizing Filecoin storage for things like AI, compute, and Web2 object storage through things like S3 APIs. Um, and so really customizing and harnessing those Filecoin L1 components and making them highly useful and tuned for that storage market. Um, last, we have Basin, which is doing a ton of work to add on things like S3 buckets and the configuration that's needed for large-scale deepin networks to progressively store their data into Filecoin as you have cars generating maps around the world or you have WeatherXM generating localized weather data um, and storing all of that data on Filecoin and using this large-scale decentralized storage network for these large-scale decentralized infrastructure networks. Um, there's also some really, really interesting work that Triton and Descent and others have been doing to bring chain data onto Filecoin, with Solana being kind of the first large-scale case study, um, bringing all of their archival ledger data onto the Filecoin network, and now working to start upgrading that to power things like RPCs and indexers. Um, and so they're not just making the, the archive of Solana more resilient and easier to access, they're starting to build new 
Web3 native infrastructure tools on top of that chain data. And I think it's a really exciting path forward and we need better on-ramps to make sure that all Web3 chains can be doing that on Filecoin as well. Um, next, we talk about growing Filecoin's adoption services and exports. Um, so you might have seen this diagram if you were at the uh, Filecoin Dev Summit over the last couple of days, um, how we have storage clients using configured optimized storage on-ramps to then work directly with storage providers, index their data, and then retrieve it back out. Um, and we've been working on upgrading this system over the past year to go through this storage and retrieval lifecycle. Um, a lot of improvements have happened on the, the storage side. Um, we now have uh, almost, or we, we are testing F3 in the network, which is um, enabling much faster uh, interop with the Filecoin network, both for things like cross-chain um, storage systems, but also for things like liquidity or paying across multiple different chains or for faster bridging um, so that we can have much faster interop for networks like Solana that might want to be storing their data on Filecoin in real time. Um, we made a number of improvements in NV23, which was the waffle upgrade that launched in Brussels earlier this year, um, focused on improving the, the OPEX costs of storage providers and making it a more flexible system to join the Filecoin network. You don't have to both be doing a, a long-term storage system and be doing all of the compute-heavy storage processing. You can differentiate those into different networks. Um, and the, the Ramo Web3 Mine team has been doing a lot with this um, new network uh, feature in order to make it much, much cheaper to run a Filecoin storage provider node um, and much more flexible to, to join the network. Um, we also have big improvements that the Curio team and, uh, and Venus team have integrated SupraSeal, which is a much, much more cost efficient set of um, sealing improvements for, for adding data on Filecoin. And that makes being a storage provider way more efficient um, and creates a much faster onboarding pathway so data ends up on the Filecoin network faster. Um, we, I mentioned these really exciting new Web3 data onboarding ramps that are targeting different user groups within the Web3 community um, to make sure that you know, both object level storage on Filecoin is easy, um, along with larger scale deep end data where you might be storing you know, terabytes of, of weather data. Um, there's also a really new getting started guide and smart contract template specifically for cross-chain storage deals that the Phil Builders team is helping onboard many, many builders to creating much more flexible cross-chain deals, which means that you can be a smart contract in Optimism, in Solana, in Ethereum, wherever you're otherwise doing your, your uh, application, you can then be bringing your storage to Filecoin and fetching your data back from Filecoin. And I know we saw some stuff from the, the Glitter team specifically about using the um, CCIP read APIs to grab data that was stored in Filecoin and rehydrate smart contracts. And I think that's a really, really exciting opportunity for builders to take advantage of right now. More on the retrieval side. Retrieval has gone from zero to 60 in the last year. We've seen over 10x improvement in retrievability of data on Filecoin. We are now retrieval checking and auditing all data that is um, stored through the Filecoin um, Plus verified data system. We have over 30 storage providers with a 90 plus percent retrieval success rate, which is awesome. Um, and we have globally as a network, uh, a 12.5 retrieval success rate, which is, you know, 10x better than when we started measuring this in uh, January, February of this year. Um, we're also now using that as part of evaluating the quality of data that's stored on Filecoin and deciding what data we want to reward as a network for bringing useful clients and services into the Filecoin ecosystem. We're also in the next week after the Filecoin network upgrade next Wednesday, going to be launching the proof of data possession smart contract onto Filecoin mainnet. It's already up on calibration net today. And this is a new hot storage proof that is going to be live on Filecoin L1 for every on-ramp application L2 to make use of so that you can have both a cold archival copy or five cold archival copies, and you can make sure that you have a hot copy that is accessible for any sort of retrieval or real-time access that you want to do within the network. Um, and so that can layer along with the proof of replication that already exists on Filecoin to offer much more flexible service tiers. A couple of things that, just to preview for you, are launching over the next couple of quarters within this domain. Um, I mentioned bringing uh, PDP to mainnet, which is going out 
next week or in the next couple of weeks after NV24. Um, we also have a lot of work happening for on-chain paid storage deals. And so we're going to be working on um, client storage payments contracts that can work with PDP, that can probably work with PoRep as well, um, and that can enable a much more flexible structure for clients to pay for the storage that they're making on Filecoin. Um, also, some very exciting updates that are happening in, you know, later in the live stream, talking about stable coins. Um, this is going to be a big breakthrough both for clients and for the Filecoin ecosystem as a whole. Um, we have not one, but two Filecoin-backed stable coins, think DAI, backed by ETH in the Ethereum ecosystem, but backed by Filecoin, um, that are going to be equipping storage providers, clients, and the whole ecosystem of stakeholders with a more predictable way to pay and price storage one, two, three, ten years in the future, um, an easier way for storage providers to um, think about the revenue they're bringing in from their clients, um, and also fuel and fund and get loans for their CapEx and OpEx needs within the network while still staying highly invested in the Filecoin economy. Um, so that's a really exciting breakthrough for us as a community and something that I imagine many teams will be taking much more advantage of over the next couple quarters. Um, we also have been doing a lot of work around defining the different Filecoin storage tiers that need to exist for meeting different client needs and enforcing those. And so we have uh, had some deep dive conversations about that at FDS and we have a uh, early prototype that we want to be building out over the next couple of quarters for how we're going to be bringing each of the SLIs that clients care about on chain, being able to pay for them directly, monitor and enforce them with um, real time metrics updates on L1, and then make sure that the client uh, quality of service is being met. Uh, so we're going to be upgrading things around uh, how we tra track storage deals in the Filecoin network and how we collect this data to ensure that when you as a client can specify everything you care about to Filecoin and Filecoin make sure it gets done and you don't have to pay attention to, hey, what is my storage provider retrievability score these days? Um, there's also going to be some smoothing of that retrieval lifecycle and our monitoring tools around it, uh, making sure that uh, Spark v2 is able to very clearly measure all of the uh, client retrievability needs and enforce that that's um, getting done well, and general smoothing of that storage and retrieval lifecycle. We have a couple of pain points we're seeing clients hit often right now that's standing in the way of them being able to robustly pay for and trust the data that they're storing. We want to make sure that those pain points uh, go away and on-ramps have to do a little bit less deep customization and monitoring of the system because they can uh, rely on it to just work. Um, last but not least, a lot of these improvements we are kind of fitting into the overall header that we're calling Filecoin Web Services, which is this evolution of the Filecoin L1 capabilities into a much more uh, capable market that's selling multiple different services within the Filecoin economy and serving the needs of a, a broader set of clients who want not just archival storage, but hot storage, retrieval, compute, and many other types of services all sold and denominated in the Filecoin economy. Um, and so that's a really exciting vision that we're pushing forward to in 2025. Last but not least, we also have been doing a lot of work over 2024 on scaling the Filecoin economy. Um, a couple of, as a reminder, this is one of the maps we use for thinking about the Filecoin economy, the different uh, value and services that we are exporting, which is you know, storage, but also things like block space and um, on-ramps and things like that. We have imports, where we have storage providers paying for their OPEX and um, utilizing that um, kind of like other, other economies um, and paying fill for that. And then we have a number of internal businesses where we are buying and selling within the Filecoin economy. And then there are fees associated with that um, that, that grow and fuel the um, you know, kind of core uh, internal revenue of that economy. Um, and so we've made a number of improvements to this over the past year. We have significantly decreased network-wide OPEX through a number of cost improvements for storage providers. It is now way cheaper to run a storage provider in the Filecoin economy, um, thanks to a number of the, the upgrades from DDO to SuperSeal, NIPO rep, Snap deals, the improvements that Curio and Ramo and others have been making in the economy, um, it's now actually possible to run a Filecoin storage provider node through Ramo on a MacBook Pro. So you have no reason to not be offering up your uh, extra storage services to the Filecoin economy today. 
We've also started onboarding, onboarding paying users as Filecoin storage clients. Um, we have shipped a number of improvements and, and built out client teams that are focused on finding and converting um, existing clients of other maybe Web2 economies um, to come into the Filecoin ecosystem and pay for storage here, which brings an additional revenue flow into storage providers. Um, and one of the big components of that that we heard from all clients is they care about retrieving their data and setting their retrieval tier correctly. And so we've made a significant improvement, as I mentioned, on all of these uh, retrieval checking metrics and retrieval incentives to make sure those client needs are being met there. And that continues to be a big area of focus for us in 2025. Um, last but not least, there's been a huge growth in DeFi businesses and Filecoin. We now have DEXs live. There's been a crazy new adoption of um, folks that are using SushiSwap, Uniswap, um, all of the other cross-chain bridging. Axelar is like, Filecoin and Axelar are off the charts in the past two months. It's been really awesome to see this whole DeFi cross-chain bridging story really evolving and, and increasing for Filecoin. Um, and I think one of the things I'm most excited about that's coming in the next couple months is landing fast finality and integrations so that those groups have uh, you know, much faster user experience for moving thing, moving. Um, coins and data across networks, uh, and you can add much more DeFi liquidity um, and much lower costs in waiting for the network to update to the latest state. Um, I mentioned stable coins. I think this is gonna be a really exciting opportunity and my ask for all of you is to help with testing over the next couple of months. Um, I think at least uh, USDFC is about to be live on Calibration Net and we'd really like to ask the community to help stress test because we, you know, many, many groups, um, myself on the Philaws side and others elsewhere, want to take advantage of these, these new protocols but we wanna make sure that they are stress tested and ensured to be useful um, and so I think this is an opportunity for all of us to evaluate and make sure that they are working well. Um, th this solves a really useful um, challenge within the Filecoin economy, making sure that as we are utilizing our Filecoin reserves, that we are able to do so in a way that's um, value aligned with the Filecoin network and, and ecosystem. So um, please join me in spending a lot of time on Calibration Net, making sure that this is functional uh, before groups bring these onto mainnet. Um, one of the other things that I think has been a really useful evolution for the Filecoin economy is the, the new launch of Retro PGF, which happened, I think the first one started in April of this year, and the second one is underway right now. Badge holders are technically allowed to be voting on the you know, 125 or 150 plus submissions. Um, and this has been a really useful evolution for the Filecoin economy to have the community allocating resources um, towards the projects that are making the most impact and creating the most value in this world. Um, so very excited. If you're a badge holder, please go vote. Um, if you are not a badge holder, please get involved in public goods funding and support. There are many public goods teams. Over 10 new public goods teams came to the Filecoin network in 2024. Um, Philaws is one of them, and they can also use your support, your feedback on um, how they can be creating the most value in the Filecoin ecosystem. Um, and a big thank you to all of these teams for really stepping up and taking ownership of really important domains across the Filecoin network, from Curio that's focused on the storage provider stack, to Phil Ponto that's focused on um, builder uh, ecosystem and infra and interop with different chains, um, to Starboard that's focused on metrics, um, uh, ANSA that's focused on you know network research and data and um, you know helping make Filecoin uh, understandable to a much wider community. Um, there's a lot of work that these teams do to support and build out public goods, and so a big thank you to all of them that are making Filecoin better. Um, you can support them as well. Please help contribute to Filecoin public goods. You can do that by designing and building public goods yourself, directing funding within this ecosystem, growing the Filecoin economy that benefits all of them, or funding public goods directly. I'm sure any of these uh, team leads would be happy to talk to you if you have resources to, to contribute back to the public goods you depend on in Filecoin. All right, um, now to very, very briefly look forward to 2025, and then we can talk about it more as well. Um, as we 
celebrate the fourth birthday of Filecoin and go into the fifth year of Filecoin mainnet. Um, I have three things that I think um, we as a community should be focusing on and should be measuring to help drive our, our focus and our uh, improvement plan for 2025. Um, the first one of those is pretty obvious. We should be focusing on growing the number of clients of Filecoin and specifically those who are rapidly happy using Filecoin and would be very disappointed if you took Filecoin away from them. Um, and so this is kind of our uh, North Star metric of we are solving a problem for these users. They can't get this anywhere else and it's useful and, and um, solving their pain points well. Uh, and I think we have, we have a couple of these right now. We have many clients of Filecoin. We have a couple who would be very disappointed if we took it away. I'd like us to have a, a significant um, number of these by the end of 2025 who are using Filecoin Filecoin and are very, very happy. Um, next is driving revenue from paid storage deals. Um, we've seen this kind of uh, rising as a, a, a focus area for Filecoin, but especially with the launch of stable coins, with the launch of more services that you can pay for on L1, things like PORAP, PDP, Spark Retrieval Checking, and more. Um, I think this is going to be a big focus for next year, is making sure clients are utilizing those services and are paying for it on chain um, on L1. And last but not least, growing the in-network activity in the Filecoin economy. Um, this stable coins help us bring more of that activity within the economy. Things like SP loan programs can help them scale out and um, you know, have, have their OPEX more denominated, say, in stable coins. Um, and having network fees that align that revenue from paid storage deals with growth of the Filecoin economy itself. Um, and so I think that's our, our third um, KPI to be tracking for the network overall. And I think if we achieve these three things, we will be incredibly successful in 2025. We will have happy users that are ready to go and bring their friends and their colleagues onto the Filecoin network. We will have revenue that we are earning from these folks that storage providers and the network as a whole can reinvest in growth. Um, and we will be tying that directly to the growth of the Filecoin economy and the, the value that we are accruing as a network and ecosystem. We will be uh, exporting more value to the world than we have to import, um, and that will put us in a place where our economy can, can grow and scale and we can achieve a lot as a group. So those are, those are my, my goals and the KPIs I suggest we focus on for 2025. Um, and with that, let's work on making Filecoin better together. I'd love to um, chat more about the, the work that we're doing here um, and excited to, to chat with all of you. So feel free to message me on Twitter, Farcaster, Farcaster, or go check out um, what we're doing on the Phil Oz team in the QR code in the corner. Thank you all. Molly, wow. <laughs> that was an incredible retro. So much progress, so many achievements in one short year. I thought what we could do now is perhaps look to the future. Uh, so I've got a few questions for you, if you don't mind. Um, I guess for anyone who's just tuning in to the Coindesk live stream right now, maybe you could just give us a little bit of a recap on some of the biggest improvements to Foil Filecoin in 2024, but also the next upgrades, NV24 and NV25, what is that going to unlock for the network? <laughs> yeah, so looking back, I think the... Um, the move to having much more retrieval checking and retrievability of data on Filecoin was a big focus, priority, and, and necessity for the clients that are storing their data with Filecoin today. Um, I think the improvements in OPEX are really critical for our storage provider community to make um, offering, you know, we're raising the bar here. We are asking the whole Filecoin community to level up the quality of service that we are providing to clients so that it is more and more, um, a, you know, a depended part of their storage stack and they're able to um, pay for that and, and take revenue that they might spend previously storing their data on AWS and instead spend that money on storing their data with Filecoin storage providers. And that means leveling up the quality of service that we as a network provide. And I think that, that theme and mission and the many building blocks within it, helping storage providers do that cost efficiently, um, helping the network monitor and measure that that is happening well. Um, those are really big changes. Uh, looking forward to NV24 and NV25, um, fast finality is the thing I'm most excited about. It both uh, has 
big impacts on the cost effectiveness of running on ramps, of running storage provider software. Um, it makes it less costly to hold data and wait for finality. It's a much better user experience of both being a storage provider and a client within Filecoin. Um, and it's going to make interoperating Filecoin into all of these other economies and using that Web3 storage service across the entire Web3 you know, ecosystem of different chains way more effective and way, way easier to use. And so that's what I'm most excited for. Um, that, that's part of the NV24 and NV25 upgrades. So I think that's going to be a, a big uh, step forward for our entire community. Um, there's also you know, a lot of uh, smaller kind of quality of service things. There's been a big focus on um, making sure that indexers and RPCs and builders can bring their applications into the Filecoin economy effectively um, and you know, have to rely less on making lots of customized tweaks, so really improving that EVM compatibility within Filecoin. So there's a couple of features that are launching in NV24 that are focused on that as well. Um, and so that, that general domain um, is, is what I'm most excited about. I'd love to double click on something you just said there. So in the Waffle upgrade in July, Fast Finality, or F3, came to beta test on the network. Um, but what does Fast Finality do to actually benefit Filecoin's users, clients, and other stakeholders on the network? Yeah, so Fast Finality, for those that, that aren't as familiar with F3, um, Filecoin as a uh, proof of work, proof of useful work chain um, is also a heaviest chain protocol, which means that as folks are mining the blockchain over time, um, they're evaluating which history set of previous blocks do they mine on top of um, based on kind of, uh, you know, a heaviness metric. But that meant that that uh, that, that might change over time. And so Filecoin historically has had a very long finality wait period before you can rely that your version of history might not change out from underneath you. So that was previously 900 epochs, which is like seven and a half hours oh, that wow. you'd have to wait before you could ensure 100% guaranteed by consensus of the chain these blocks and this history will not change. Um, and that's really a long time, and most people don't want to wait that long to, say, get a confirmation on their exchange that their transaction or um, you know, deposit has gone through. And so Fast Finality updates that. It adds a new kind of hybrid finality protocol on top where we can get a, a number of storage providers to confirm um, on kind of a, an epoch by epoch level this is final, we have agreed on the heaviest chain, we have agreed on what is, what is final as an ecosystem, and so you can have much faster confirmation times for bridges and exchanges, which helps all builders and clients and users of applications have a much faster feedback loop of like what, what Filecoin's version of, uh, of events is. Um, it also helps groups like storage providers who are previously having to, to wait for their confirmations to kind of become finalized on chain and hold data around for a period of time um, to make sure that uh, that's been confirmed across a number of different epochs. And so now, with Fast Finality, as soon as we get that Fast Finality confirmation, we can start on offloading data that's not important anymore or taking the next action. Um, so it also means that their ceiling and on data onboarding pipelines can go much faster. Um, and so, it, and it's of course also very useful for anyone who's bridging liquidity across different chains. Um, many of these bridges, if you want a trustless bridge, you need Fast Finality to be um, you know, interoperating back and forth between these networks. So now you can have bridges that are watching the Finality gadget and running like an F3 you know, kind of Finality watcher, way lighter weight than running an entire storage provider or mining node within the Filecoin economy. So whole new um, ways of doing bridging in Filecoin can now be possible, interoperating with other networks works and bridging liquidity into the Filecoin ecosystem. That's massive. Congratulations. That's got to do so much for driving forward adoption. That's the huge. credit goes to the many, many engineers and researchers. This has been in the works for a long time. It's taken a ton of energy and a ton of testing. We have been testing this thoroughly in mainnet since the summer, and we are going to continue testing over the next couple of months to make sure that we uh, don't make any uh, changes to that that might harm the Filecoin network or uh, create instability. And so that's taken a lot of work, and really the credit goes to, to many, many 
many engineers who are not here today. Well done, guys. Yeah, I think speed is really a holy grail in blockchain, so well done. We might have time for just one more quick question. One of the things that I thought was super interesting about your presentation was all these new on-ramps and L2s that are launching in the ecosystem. So going forward in the next year, what does that actually mean for the network and what sort of new things do you think uh, users will be able to look forward to? Yeah, um, for us, and maybe a little bit differently than how Ethereum L2s and L1 work together, um, L2s are really helping customize and um, optimize the, the L1 primitives in Filecoin for specific user groups and add on their own you know, developer APIs or additional requirements to meet that particular user group. So we see many of the L2s that are launching over the, the next couple of days as uh, incredible leaps forward for the service capability of what Filecoin can offer to many different client networks, whether that's optimizing for D-PIN networks or optimizing for, you know, um, social gaming applications or optimizing for larger scale compute and AI use cases. And so I'm very, very excited for the L2s and on-ramps that are tuning those L1 primitives to make it more useful. And I think what that means for the entire Web3 and Web2 clients on Filecoin is that's a, a new tuned set of Filecoin interfaces that can meet your needs much more simply and easily to use. Um, and that means for storage providers is when you go and you meet the storage requirements of those L2 networks, so you bring in, you're doing not just PO rep, but you're also storing your PDP hot copy, there might be additional revenue sources associated with those L2 networks to reward you for taking that next step. So it lets us tune and optimize the service capabilities within the Filecoin ecosystem and bring additional value flows to the storage providers who step up. Um, and it helps us move a lot faster than waiting for each one of those capabilities and, and tuned parameters to land on L1 through our consensus and governance process. So I th think we're going to see much faster iteration. We're going to see much faster faster shipping of new features and um, onboarding of new clients because we've got three to four different on-ramps that are going to each be targeting a whole new set of users. Um, and then I think we'll be focused on the L1 side on making sure each of those on-ramps is equipped to, uh, with like the primitives and, and value from L1 to focus on doing what they do really well and be able to rely on L1 to take care of the rest. Amazing. I think I mentioned earlier that I've been following Filecoin from the beginning. So seeing this whole vision come to fruition is just fantastic. And congratulations on everything you've done. I think Molly mentioned that you can hit her up on Twitter if you want to know more. Um, but that's all we've got time for. Thank you so much. Thanks, Molly. Great.